What's going on, everybody? It's real with Jordan and Demi. I'm in LA, Demi's in New York, and all the way from Croatia, we have our guest today, Hauser. What's going on? Hi. We covered all the time zones. Yeah, just about. <laughs> just about. Just about. Um, just so are you based in Croatia or do you have other like homes or studios that you work out of, like in London maybe or something? Or are you pretty much staying in Croatia when you're recording, when you're working on stuff? I'm not based anywhere. I just travel all the time. I'm homeless, basically. <laughs> that music life. Yeah, yeah. that is the musician's life. I mean, if you have to be in a, in a like somewhere for a concert, you have to go. And then if yeah. you want to stay, then you stay. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. It's That's just, just what it is. It's unpredictable. It's, yeah. yeah. What does like a classical musician, because I thought about it today when I was thinking about like classical music um, and just like maybe the difference between someone who maybe plays, I don't know, indie rock versus classical music, even though you have a modern twist on your style. Like what is like the life, the daily life of a classical musician like? Do you practice well, eight I mean, hours a day? Not anymore. I used to. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was uh, when I was a little boy, when I was studying, when I was in high school, it was just practicing, you know? But then once the career takes off, you don't have much time for practicing anymore. You just need to tour and play concerts and travel and, you know, it becomes crazy. Yeah. You're returning to your classical roots. Your last album, The Player, was this Latin-themed pop album with Live and La Vida Loca and all these sort of like Latin pop classics. Um, but you're returning with Classic 2 back to kind of your roots. Is this kind of what made you go back to the more traditional classical music after doing that Latin pop album? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm very diverse, you know. Inside of me, there is a serious classical musician and rock star at the same time. And they're constantly, you know, battling inside of me. And uh, classical music, it's always, of course, the foundation. That's where I come from. This is the basis of everything I will always do. And basically, all those genres come from classical music anyway. So classical music will always have a special place in my heart. And I will always continue to experiment and do crazy things as well you know on the side and my shows are very actually what's interesting about my shows and tour is that everyone can get to hear everything i start with classical songs and then i finish i turn it into a crazy rock show or you know whatever yeah i, I was watching some of your concerts on youtube they're incredible like the scope of them and your audience and and the lighting and the presentation and you have these huge horn sections and it's just it's wild um uh do you have an art director you work with do you have like someone who's always kind of been your person to kind of help arrange all the stage stuff or do you use different people like how do you make how do you how do you get from like an idea in your head to this huge stage show i mean it was all all comes from me all these crazy ideas i mean i always envisioned myself as this ultimate showman i always wanted to you know make a show that includes everything that that actually makes everyone happy classical musicians the people who come to because when you go to classical concert it's only classical music if you go to rock show it's only rock music and and my show you got to experience everything it's like a whole roller coaster and i always wanted to make this complete experience where you really get to experience all the emotions all the moods on my show you can cry smile dance everything you know and you, and you tend to get the ladies in a, in a frenzy during your shows at some point yeah, that's, even, that's, you know. that's part of the deal yeah yeah <laughs> this is like boy chat <laughs> <laughs> boy chat out of all the instruments though right you think about it it's like what like string instruments you know what i mean but then you think okay like why not guitar you know what i mean like what was it about your instrument that attracted you the most yeah i mean Did your parents I was, make you play cello no actually i was the one who decided to play it i was a very little boy i heard it on the radio and i was like wow i heard this beautiful warm sound and i was that was a defining moment but then later on 
I was, you know, I was a rebellious nature and I always was frustrated. Why the guitar? Why piano? Why everything is more popular than cello? And this is where actually started all these crazy ideas started to, you know, cook in my head when I was a little boy. I wanted to get to attract the ladies with the cello. Why always guitar, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah why not? And this it is works. how it started. And many years later, all the dreams are coming true. Yeah. Crazy. The rock star cellist, uh, rebel, rebel, rebel with a cello. I think is what what it, uh, the the title you used. Yeah, yeah, that's the name of the tour. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. think that's that quote, right? There's like a quote that I think I may have heard in school um, a long time ago. It's just like ten thousand hours of practice um, is kind of like what you need to to maintain some sort of like some level of uh, perfection. Is that true? Would you say? I, I didn't count really the hours. <laughs> how do you think it's 10,000 hours? Uh, who knows how many hours has been? Yeah, but I think, of course, I mean, you really need to dedicate uh, periods of long periods of your life to become master of something. That's for sure. I mean, and I dedicated my whole childhood to become a, the, you know, master of my craft so it was a very it took a lot of uh, it's like a professional athlete you know yeah so that's, yeah yeah instead of in the gym you're in the practice room yeah, yeah. No, and now it's time to move to gym actually mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah 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 i guess you got to do both now i got to do the gym and the practice room um, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's your like like do you work like do you work out you know what, what I mean? Like, what do you do? And what does like a professional, like classical musician do when they go to the gym? Actually, then, my shows are so exhausting. My You work out your fingers? My concerts are like a workout, you know? There you because go. My, I sweat a lot. I lose, I don't know how many kilos every concert because it's really like a marathon. I do crazy things. I run. Yeah, I they're, 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 they're like two and a half, three hours long, your concert. Yeah. 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 Very physical. Yeah. And I feel like the cello is a, a physical instrument as well, you know? Yeah. It's very physical. Yeah, you could you could have played, you know, the ukulele. It'd be be easier to handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should switch. Speaking of instruments, uh, I uh, actually started out covering a lot of classical music when I first started my career, and I learned that you know, obviously, um, classical musicians have really nice instruments, but a lot of them are hundreds of years old and they're thousands of tens of thousands of dollars. How many cellos do you have? And do you have like a prize cello that's like was belonged to some count in the 1600s or something? Oh, my God. Actually, actually there are those cellos that are worth millions and millions, you know? Yeah, all it's nuts. Old maker. But, you know, I don't even want to play those cellos because I just feel the responsibility. And, you know, when you're touring and you just need to be, you will be stressed out all the time. So... Mm. I prefer not to use those really expensive ones. Interesting. I use them. I use them when I need them for like important recording or if there is one classical concert. Then okay, but on the road, you know, it's you. You can lose it. You can forget it in the taxi, in the hotel room, in the, you know. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Too much pressure. Too much pressure. Yeah. Yeah, Dimmy's a guitarist, and I, you know, I've always thought it's interesting about because gu guitar is the same way. You can have like a vintage guitar that's worth so much money versus just like something you could throw on stage, and you know, it's exactly. Like, yeah, and actually, on my tour, mostly I'm using electric cellos because it's easier to amplify. You know, because oh. I play, I play big, big arenas, and you cannot really amplify acoustic cello for these big venues. You know. Oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. yeah, are there are there like snobs that like call you out for not using like the real deal, you know, Renaissance? No, because, uh, because arenas are not meant for you know, this acoustic sure. classical color. Sure. I mean, yeah, it's never never happened that cellists played arenas. So yeah, there is no one to <laughs> criticize. Them. Right, yeah. right, right. My friend went to an opera the other day at Lincoln Center. I don't know if you have you ever been to Lincoln Center in New York. No. There, so it's like a cool place. Like I think they have a few theaters where they they have operas and they have um, like classical kind of concerts. And it had me thinking like about like 
kind of preserving right like classical music and like i know you like have a modern twist on your style but how important um is it to you to kind of like keep um that style of music alive oh yeah of course it's important i admire and respect the tradition as well i mean and uh, it's important to educate younger generation especially for uh, with classical music they need to know about all those composers and all those masterpieces it's definitely some that's my mission as well to keep those masterpieces alive and this is why i'm spreading uh, as much as i can the classical music and my at my concerts and i'm doing albums like this one and it's important to do it because young kids nowadays oh my god they have so much not a good influence at all you know <laughs> someone's gotta do it someone's gotta really save I the mean, world I mean, you know that's fine interesting is is um is how much like pop music do you listen to how much rock music do you listen to like when you're listening to music on your free time what do you what do you what do you listen to i am i'm a little bit strange because i only like those old songs old romantic songs i don't oh, really yeah? listen yeah i don't really listen nowadays music i'm not a trendy guy i just i just like you know all these you know, Are you I'm consider like, yourself a romantic person? Personally, do you consider yourself a romantic guy? I mean, yeah, for <laughs> sure. I mean, what's yeah. the most romantic thing you've done for someone? Play the cello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. That is so funny. I think that'd be such a baller move because, because like you know, as as a guy growing up, like rock and roll, like pulling out the guitars, like the move to make, to, like want to press a girl. But that I think that'd be so much more baller to like pull out a cello. The cello is so much more yeah. sensual, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cello have, is the new guitar. Do you have? Do you have? A, are there any rivalries with other cellists? Like, did you did you like wake up one day and was like, you know, that Yo Yo Ma guy? We got to put him in his place. Oh. He's had his time, oh, you know. Yeah. I, I, mean, I need to, I need to take over. Oh, there was no really much live or rivalry because I mean, it's like uh, no one could ever imagine that cello will you know fill up arenas one day, and this is what's right. happening now. It's like crazy. It's a total revolution. No one has expected this to ever happen, and I cannot believe that I achieved my dreams and I play sold arenas all around the world and. It's insane. Now you've you've obviously you played a range plays big concert halls. My question I'm always wondering about a classical musician is is there a specific concert hall or place you've played, maybe some kind of cathedral that has like the per most perfect acoustics? Like what place have you played that has like the most wonderful acoustics? Actually, on this tour, I'm gonna have a few iconic venues. Carnegie Hall, of course, as you know, New York. Yes. Royal Albert, Royal Albert Hall in London. These are like, those are considered, you know, most iconic places, especially for classical music. So I can't wait to really experience the acoustic there in those places. What do, what do you, are you a big, do you, do you love um, touring America? What's your impression of America? How much, because uh, I feel like, you know, Europeans, I think the stereotype is that Europeans appreciate classical music more than Americans. But yeah. how, how do you like playing America? What, what do you think about American audiences? Oh, they're amazing. They're the loudest always. Oh. They're always so excited, you know, and uh, full of love and standing ovations. And it's always louder than the rest of the world, actually. Okay, yeah. interesting. I wouldn't have thought that. I would have thought... I feel like you know, the rest of the world has, like, manners. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like no offense to Americans, but well, you know I mean, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about uh how polite Japanese artists with our Japanese audiences are with with one of our guests recently. And yeah, it's a, it's a whole different different parts They're of the world. They're more reserved, you know, more reserved. But Japanese audience, it's crazy. They're like they clap exactly in the rhythm perfectly, like you know, interesting. It's yeah, so perfect, you cannot imagine. Right. That, been like the hardest place to tour, like the most kind of like, maybe you're not, I mean, they're probably all your favorite cities, but what's been kind of the most like any kind of, kind of like funny stories from like certain places? Oh my God. There should be a Netflix original. <laughs> your Netflix show. Yeah. Many seasons. I mean, <laughs> where do I start from? Yeah. <laughs> maybe one day there will be. 
part 10. <laughs> do you do you prefer like do you have a favorite country that you played in uh or favorite part of the world you know all those arenas and all those concert halls look more or less the same so what's what is really interesting is when you play venues that are like red rocks when you see you know outdoor beautiful nature you see the stars or when yeah. you play Col Colosseum in rome or you know something that is different than usual this is what right. what uh, inspires you or, or even we played the uh, in uh, hollywood ball that was nice open air oh you know? yeah classic i don't appreciate the traffic i have to drive past that sometimes yeah, the traffic oh my yeah. goodness yeah i mean traffic traffic is like in LA, it's always uh, oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah so you're you're when you when you put together classical albums did you have such a large you know, canon of songs to choose from. Yeah. How do you go about creating a track list for one of your classes? Really it's the hardest part of, of the process because you you like you love all those melodies so much and I know so many, you know, and you need to you are limited to only, you know, to choose for the album. And I don't really know how we do it. It's like this is why I'm gonna do classic one, two, three, four, five, six hundred in the future because i have yeah, to do yeah. all these melodies they're beautiful all right do you already have them planned out like do you already know kind of know what are going to be on what's going to be on thir three four five and six I mean, approximately yeah i already know a classic thousand imagine the cd box yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it you will be like right right well you know it helps out with your label your your, your label knows what's coming down the pike you know it's nice. yeah 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 do you have a favorite composer or are you one of those people? It's like, no, I can't choose a favorite. Uh, maybe Mozart. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Do you have I, a favorite? I, so I, so my favorite piece of classical music is the planets, Holst, the planets. Oh, wow. Really? Interesting. And so, right. yeah. So like, like Jupiter is probably my favorite piece of classical music. It's your favorite planet. Yeah, I'm on a favorite planet. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I was I was a bank. I played trumpet uh for really? five or six yeah. years when I was in school. So but I was more into like jazz stuff than I was classical, I guess, oh. you know, which makes sense being a horn player. Yeah, trumpet. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like Miles Davis. Yeah, yeah. I was I was almost as good as he was. Almost oh, as good. Okay. Yeah, not quite. No, come uh, on. You were yeah. better. Come on, admit it. You were better than him. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm 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 yeah, you're right. You're right. I am. I'm I'm really good. You're right. You're right. One thing that I noticed about your live show too is your um the other musicians um on stage. I, I think for certain numbers, you have different, you know, is it like an orchestra kind of here and there for certain songs, right? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. he's got horn sections. How do you go yeah, about like I choosing? A, I have a string section. Yeah, I mean uh String section for the first part of the show, all these uh, soundtracks, all this kind of music, and then for second part, I have like a brass section for these Latin songs, the percussion, the drums, uh, keyboard, guitar, bass, of course. So it's like a whole whole setup. A lot of musicians. If you think about like a rock Big band, you think about mm -hmm. like the different personality kind of like. The different personalities, right? The singer has a personality that people know about, or like the drummer is like this type. What kind of personalities um, would you say string players have versus horn players versus opera singers? Are string players more wild than you would think? Yeah, who, who are the wild ones? You know what I mean? The cello players are the wildest. <laughs> who are the least wild? Who are like the calm ones? Come on, oh, I don't want to to get in trouble here. I'm not gonna. I don't want to stereotype anyone. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I guess it is funny. We we think of uh, classical musicians as being very like proper, players, behaved, and you know, yeah. <laughs> I had a friend who played um the bass, yeah. but like, what would you call it? Like the bass that's like eight the feet. upright bass like the upright yeah. bass 
Yeah, yeah, I had a friend and he's amazing. He ended up going to um, Juilliard and studying later on, but he was the most serious personality I've ever experienced. Like I'd, I'd be sitting next to him in class and I'd be like, Hey Cole, like what's going on? He'd just be like, like he was just so serious. So I always thought that the bass players from then on were like this very serious type of person. And then I guess, yeah, you're right. Like string players, like guitar players are the ones that are a little bit more like known to be wild. Right, Jordan? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Who knows? Yeah. So how are trumpet you? players? <laughs> trumpet yeah, players, kind of yeah. Uh, trumpet players are a little goofy. I feel like, I feel like horn players in general are more like they have to be told what to do. They have to be reminded no. of things. They're a little <laughs> bit like their heads in the clouds a little bit, you know. I'm not disciplined. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I actually started out on the on the baritone on the on the baritone horn was what I started out on. Then I went to the trumpet. But uh, but when you put this band together, do you personally know everyone? Do you do you handpick all your supporting uh, your supporting players? I guess, or do you have like a sort of like maybe like an orchestral manager who kind of like fills out the spots for you? Actually, most of them I knew actually. Oh, so cool. And yeah, it was very important for me to know the key players, like percussion, drummer. Drummer was touring with two cellos for like 10 years already, so okay. it was already part of, of, of my life long ago. When you decided to go solo and two cellos become one cello, um, was that a, a, a gradual progression or was it like a decision you made overnight? It was like, I need to be my own person or did it kind of gradually happen? No, actually, I mean, I was still in two cellos. I was putting out my solo stuff on the side, you know? And this solo stuff just took off crazy. There was actually a demand for me as a solo artist, and it was increasing year after year. So in a way, it just became a natural progression, you know? And it was really surprising because I was, you know, doing those crazy rock shows as a two cellos. And then I was doing my own stuff just like a passion project, you know, all this classical, slow music, beautiful, just for me. I was putting it on YouTube and suddenly it was just getting millions and millions of views. Like, it was like crazy. It was unheard of until that moment. It was like, I don't know, now Albinoni Adagio is going to hit 100 million views, which was unheard of for classical music, for this type of music. And yeah. I was like, what is, what is going on? So demand was growing. For me to do classical music, you're just giving wow. the people what they want. Yeah, and I was not aware. I was just doing it for me. You know, I was not trying to. I was not trying to reach this kind of success with that kind of music, but it just happened. You know, it was. Uh, it was crazy. I didn't expect that. What's been like the highlight of your career so far? I think you've had like a lot of different, you know, like lives in, in your own career but like what's been your favorite part of, or if you could like relive one now the best is yet to come because now actually it's uh, this my first worldwide solo tour which is like incredible and and i'm gonna play those iconic venues and for example in the royal arbit hall in london i'm gonna do a special one-off concert it's just gonna be a classical music actually with the long royal philharmonic orchestra so this is gonna be a special special night for me because usually my tours are i'm mostly like a rock star on the tours but now this will be a special night dedicated only to classical music yeah i'm looking at your your tour right now and you you do have like you're playing the ryman in nashville which is the home of the grand old opry you're playing yeah. the orpheum here in la um are you a big vegas person you seem like your show would translate well to vegas Viva. oh my god Viva. We yeah, were, have you ever thought about that? You're, you're way you're way better singing it than Travis Kelsey is. Travis Kelsey yeah. tried that song, <laughs> did not work. You did oh it. yeah, I heard it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You know, I love. I, I'm a huge Elvis fan. Elvis is my, you know, he was my uh, how do you call it, the hero of mine. Your idol, oh, wow. a little boy. So Vegas. And Elvis was, he was my idol. So, and now I'm Elvis with the cello. I would call it Chelvis, you know? Chelvis. <laughs> yeah, you could do a whole album of Elvis so songs. I should have my own show, I think. 
What was that? Yeah, Shelby's. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. That's actually really so hopefully smart. Hopefully, one day I will have my own show in Vegas. Yeah. Like a yeah, residency. your own residency. Oh yeah, my! I would goodness. love to have my residency in Vegas. That would be cool. Yeah, I feel like that I could happen. I feel like that's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the album comes out in uh, April nineteenth. So right, we need right to do before. that. Let, let's, let, let's. I'm announcing it here on your show for the first time, exclusively. The sh the residency in Vegas. Okay. Yeah, make it happen. Make it happen. Elvis. Yeah, Chelvis. And I expect yeah. the full like, Elvis. white rhinestone, the white rhinestone jumpsuit while it's you're playing. So stuff would be so cool. Yeah, the it's whole gonna be everything over the top. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The sunglasses, you need like the Elvis sunglasses, the big, the big Elvis sunglasses. Yeah, yeah I can see it now. I can see it now. Yeah, right. yeah. So um, the album is out April seventeenth. Do you have any big event planned for the album release? A bit like a live stream, or like what? 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 What can your fans expect for the release of the album? I mean, I will be on tour during the album release. So okay, I thought maybe you were like you take his time off, and I don't. Okay, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I Let's guess see, you're man. in your. Uh, yeah, you'll be. Uh, yeah, well, you got a little bit of time. Yeah, you'll be touring. So, yeah, do you? Yeah. You you said you're kind of like a nomad. You're wandering around. You're not really homeless. I mean, you're not. You're not. You don't really have like a home base per se. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever get tired of that lifestyle? You're like, man. I just want to. I just want to have like a wife and kids. Live in Croatia. Live by the sea. You know, like does that ever pop into your head? Yeah, actually, older I get, because you know, when you're young and crazy, it's easy. But you know, every year it gets, every year it gets more exhausting. You know. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, well, you're you're right in the middle of it now. You you have time to relax later on. You have time to relax later on. Yeah, I mean, uh, now it's time to do it, you know, and then I have all the time in the world. It's all about balance, actually, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Croatia, by the way, beautiful country. I actually edited a food show that, that was filmed partly there. And the seaside towns, um, this is mostly filmed in Dub Dub uh, Dubrovnik. You're from the, the northern part of the, of the, but a beautiful country. Um, do you feel like Croatia doesn't get enough love in terms of, in terms of tourist places, in terms of destinations. Do you like it? It's kind of like a hidden gem. Do you like it staying that way, that it's not as popular as Rome or as Paris? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like we can still enjoy the nature, the beauty, the sea. And yeah, I mean, more and more, more touristic it becomes, it loses its uh, charm, you know? They have these... Uh, Demi, uh, and, and you can clarify this for me, Hauser was, they have these like dairy shops, these in, in Croatia where you like, there's a big giant, like butter hunk. And you have like the guy like carves off a piece of the butter for you. I saw that on really? the show. I don't, I don't know, uh, if that's something that you're familiar with, but yeah. Is that true? Was, oh, I haven't seen, seen it. That? Okay. It might've been one specific shop that I, that I. Guys, that I when I was like a little kid, like I would eat butter. For fun, oh, like really? for a snack, <laughs> just like well, a hunk of butter, just like a stick of butter. Fun? With I would just kind of like take like a knife and just like eat butter, like a, like a lollipop. You know what I mean? Like, wow. yeah, I was strange. Maybe that's I have an obsession with milking cows, so maybe really? that's where it comes from too. I'm just like, you know what I mean? Like unlimited butter. You know what I mean? Oh, so that's why. Yeah, I read a flashback of you asking one of our previous guests if they'd ever milked a cow. Because have you ever milked a cow? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> has never milked a cow put that on the record has never milked a never. cow i had to ask yeah one day i will <laughs> well um we appreciate your time and we wish you luck on the tour congratulations to the album um all the all the women of the world you can you can flock to see hauser and uh in america here where you're doing all the iconic venues here in america during the summer uh, American, you're going to do America during the summer. It's going to be memorable. Memorable. We, we can't wait. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Hazard. We, 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 we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye. All right. All right.
Jordan, I cannot believe I asked. Can that be a new thing for every guest? I just yeah. have you ever noticed that? You know, and and we'll we'll play it. But yeah, we so the context is that we had Chapel Roan on the show a couple months ago, who's from a small town in Missouri, and yeah. uh, actually grew up on a farm or uh, a farm type atmosphere. And so, yes, yeah, so that's what that's what that that's. So the I had to ask Chapel if she ever milked the cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and just I feel think, like our guests are from all over the world. So like maybe the, you, I feel like you, what percentage do you think have milk as a cow, Jordan? And, and very, very little. I think that the percentage would have been higher a hundred years ago when people had to like make their own food more. Yeah. You know? uh, that's just my, that's just my guess. So he's never milked a cow. I've never milked a cow. Have you ever milked, have you ever milked a cow? Did, did no, he? but I've always wanted to milk a cow since I was like a little kid. You just like the, like the magic of pulling the udder and having milk come out is just like <laughs> a thing. Like I understand it's like it is pretty wild to think that like you can just like pull this udder and there's something you can drink that comes out of it. So I I get it. Uh, I totally get it. All right, guys. So we have a little fun new thing here. We're gonna play a game called. Let me do this down. Okay. All right, we're gonna play a game called Name That Guest. All right, so. Each answer, each correct answer, and each choice will be a former guest on It's Real with Jordan and Demi. Woo! So, the crowd is roaring. The crowd is well. And I'm I'm your host, Jordan Edwards. I, yeah, I always thought about it. I could be a game show host. Okay. <laughs> All right. So oh my question God. one would be five questions. Um, worth 10 points apiece. Oh okay. my god. What are, the, what are the points equal? Like what, what happens if I win them all? If you win them all, you win a uh, vintage 1957 Les Paul. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll get, we'll get you a brand new tub of butter with yes. a little knife so you can indulge. You know, it's funny, Demi. You, you mentioned that you liked eating butter when you were a kid. I wouldn't put it past you to eat butter as an adult. Um, considering every now and then I'm like using the butter, I take a little sliver and I'm just like, you know what? I just need to have that nostalgic moment. Yeah. Yeah. You know know what's funny is this isn't quite the same thing. I got this weird, uh, shadow on my face. Um, is when I was a kid, I was the kid who would like scrape the icing off the birthday cake and just eat the icing. And now I can't stand, I got to have just a very thin layer of icing. I can't have too much icing. So that's crazy. yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to the game show. Woo! All right, question one. Which guest has opened for Taylor Swift? Is it A, Gail? Gail. B, Royal and the Serpent. C, MXM Tune, or D, Katie Turner. Gail, you got it? Okay. Gail! You got a good start. You got a good start. A, B, C, D, F, U. Yes. Question two. This is a little bit harder. Which guest has never scored a number one hit on the Billboard Alternative Songs chart? Is it A, Bush, B, Suzanne Vega, C, Our Lady Peace, or D, Everclear? Which one has never scored a number one hit on the Billboard Alternative chart? Your guess is who? C. C, Our Lady Peace is correct. Let's go! But all the rest have. Thank you. All the rest have scored at least one number one hit on the Billboard Alternative chart. So you're two for two. I'm Good start. Also. Good start. Okay. Question three. Okay. Eurythmics, Dave Stewart produced the most recent original album by which guest? Is it A, Maisie Peters, B, Joss Stone, C, Callum Scott, or D, Cannons? Man, you guys, I don't know this one. Take a guess. B. Did you say which one? Did you say B? B. B is correct. Josh Let's Stone, go! Josh Stone has, is a collaborator with Eurythmics, Dave Stewart. Okay. okay. Question uh, four. Yeah, I guess we're question four here. Um, the lead singer of which band played college baseball? Was it Dustin Pesor of Beach Fossils? A. Was it B, Judah Akers of Judah and the Lion? Was it C, Austin Knight of Water Parks? Or D, Bear Reinhardt of Need to Breathe? Which one played college baseball? Oh, my 
my god, guys. I feel like Which one seems less likely to play college baseball? Did you is Peach Pit B? There Peach Pit was not a choice. Oh. You have Beach Fossils, Judah and the Lion, Water Parks and Need to Breathe. I feel like it was Judah and the Lion. Judah and the Lion is correct. Let's go. Judah and the Lion is correct. Okay. I had too much capital. Final final question. Which guest collaborated on the track Girls At with Chance the Rapper? Was it was it A Travis Mills? Was it B Coda the Friend? Was it C Joey Perp or was it D Don McLennan of Brockhampton? My God. Guys, I feel like this is like life or death right now. Do, 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 do. No. Want to take a guess? I feel like... There's no shame because you're four for four. You missed one. That's not a big deal. You've already gotten four for four. This is gravy. All right. Let's start from what it's not. It's not... Um, it's not A. It's not A. Correct. And I know it's not, not D. Mills. I know Brockhampton. I know they didn't collab with Chance. Or at least Dom didn't. It's not Dom. And what was what was B and C? B and C is Code of the Friend or Joey Perp? Joey Perp. Joey Perp is correct. Let's go! <laughs> the song Girls At was released in uh, 2017. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I was actually going to throw Taylor Bennett in there since that's Chance's brother, but I, I, I didn't, uh, so Guys, yeah, I research the guess. So you, you went, you much. went, uh, you went five for five, a little of assistance on the last question, but you went five for five. You get all the points and your prize is a, is an imaginary vintage Les Paul guitar. Jordan, yeah. I have a question for you. What did you expect me to get? Um, I would say. I was thinking maybe three out of five. Damn. Well, because I think a couple of them you guessed right. Yeah. But I like that you you did a good um. Were you, let me ask you this, uh, Demi. Were you a good test taker in school? Like like multiple choice test questions. Were you good at those? I was actually very studious growing up, and had perfect attendance. Right. But I was you, late, but I did. But I had perfect attendance. But I was were there, you good at multiple choice late. questions on tests? How was I? Um. Did you prefer short answer or did you like multiple choice? I preferred short answer because if you give me something like to answer in a short, like yeah. written, I can, I can make any. That's true. That's You're true. You're going to get a multiple you know choice I mean? are only preferred by people who don't study because they still have a chance of getting it right. That's true. Yeah. But I was the studier. Like I was the kid with the flashcards. So you're breaking that art school stereotype that people who go to art school only care about their music or their art or whatever you were, you were locked in with the academics as well. Let yes. the, let the record show. Yes. 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 All right. Um, I, like, you know, yeah. So that was the, the first, uh, the first, uh, the first episode of name that guest. Um, we'll be back next week. Uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, no, that, that, I liked it. That was fun. That was fun. All right. New reactions from yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do. Maybe I'll pipe in some, from some, uh, cheering, cheering noises. What yeah. was that? Oh yeah. my God. All right. Thank you guys. For, thank you guys for listening and watching. It's real with Jordan and Demi. As always go to popdust.com for the latest in pop culture and music news. Follow me on Instagram at Jordan Edwards Studio. Follow Demi on Instagram at Demi underscore Ramos. Follow us on TikTok on It's Real with Jordan and Demi, the whole title of the show. My light just went out, but that's okay because the show is ending. All right. So until next time, we'll see you later. <laughs>